So I don't normally talk about gear much on this channel. I think that can distract people, uh, even myself included, from actually going out and making stuff. But today I want to give you my thoughts on the Lumix S5 after I've had it for over a year because it's been a very inspiring piece of kit for me and I believe it's one of the best value cameras on the market right now at around the $1,000 price point. Especially since the Mark II has been released, the original will start to get even cheaper. Most of what I'll talk about here though should apply to the Mark II as well, although I haven't personally used it yet. I always hate reviews that don't have any samples, so the entire video will be a bunch of photos and video clips that I've shot over the past year that you can enjoy instead of my pretty face. I've owned like 10 different cameras in this $500 to $2,000 price bracket from most of the major brands over the past few years, and the image quality to me is as good or better with this than anything I've had, including the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, Zcam S6, S5 seems to have better dynamic range, low light performance, and an easier workflow. So I think specs don't matter so much if the camera is hard to use for what you need it to do. Uh, the Blackmagic, for example, was for me annoying enough to use because of the form factor that I always left it at home unless I really needed it. But with the S5, it's so small and with such good IBIS that I can toss it in my bag with small vintage prime lens, and it's just a lot more discreet shooting in public places or on a hike. Not that the bigger rigs don't have a place, of course, but for travel or a B-cam or for solo shooting small project, a small hybrid camera i found is the best option. I usually use a color space transform to airy log and the colors are amazing and the flexibility of the 10-bit files are more than I've ever needed. And I believe it can also record 5.9K raw via the HDMI. The buttons are all in easy and logical places and can even be used with gloves on. It's clear the camera was designed to be efficient, unlike certain older Sonys that I had gotten used to. So switching to this was a breath of fresh air. Plus recording even at the highest quality to simple SD cards saves a lot of money on media and dual slots always means having a backup. Battery life is so good I've just carried one spare with me and the two batteries can easily get me through a whole day of shooting, a wedding, or for YouTube, or personal stuff. For a bigger project I would rig a V-mount battery or something anyway, but the built-in battery is fine for most things. Having a monitor LUT, scopes, and shutter angle built in is a lifesaver, and in harsh light, having the viewfinder is great for pulling focus. Weather sealing adds a level of confidence shooting outside in all weather. Um, I've gotten my camera completely soaked a few times and never had any issues. The image stabilization is amazing, um, and for such a small camera especially, it's really smooth and natural looking like 95% of the time, unlike most IBIS that I've seen. So I shoot manual focus all the time with this camera, mostly on vintage lenses. Um, I treat it just like the Blackmagic or any other traditional cinema camera. Um, and from what I've seen, the autofocus isn't quite as bad as some people make it out to be, um, especially with some of the firmware updates. It's certainly not amazing, but it seems passable at least. Photo quality is also amazing and has been more than enough to print and be happy with. I shoot mainly video professionally, but I love to take photos, so that's another reason I switched from the Blackmagic to this. Being able to do both with one camera without many sacrifices is perfect. The micro HDMI port is kind of a bummer, but since I usually use it as just a small handheld rig um, without a monitor, it's not really a deal breaker for me. Rolling shutter is pretty bad in full frame mode, um, though a little better in APS-C. Since I shoot a lot of action and handheld, this is the biggest downside for me. Um, and it's kind of the one reason keeping me from just using this camera for the next five years, but it hasn't completely stood in my way. The 4K 60p crop is kind of annoying, um, but since I'm usually shooting in 24, it's not a deal breaker. and. It's not all that noticeable unless you're trying to get a really wide shot. I think for most people the biggest downside is the autofocus, um, but again, since I kind of treat it like a regular cinema camera, it doesn't really bother me. Um, the Mark II, I think, is the biggest reason to upgrade would be the autofocus, since it has phase detect and it has a full-size HDMI port, as well as unlimited recording in all modes, I believe. 
So this camera blows me away every time I pull up the footage, and I think for under a grand used, it's one of the best deals for a hybrid camera, or really for a cinema camera, unless you need the full-size HDMI or higher frame rates without the crop. So hopefully this was helpful for some of you. Um, I've loved shooting with this camera for the last year. I don't plan to replace it, at least not completely. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll try to answer as best I can. Um, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Much, bye.